Since starting the season incredibly rough, the Pelicans have done a great job making the best out of a bad situation. And I'm not saying the situation is bad because the team flat out sucked. I'm saying that when you start the season the way the Pelicans started the season, it's easy to give up on that season. The New Orleans Pelicans never gave up. The New Orleans Pelicans haven't been waiting for a Zion Williamson return like everybody expected. Instead, they've been showing Zion exactly why he should return. I know looking at the record, you might think that, hey, that record's not crazy. It's nothing to write home about. But the Pelicans culture, the Pelicans identity at this moment goes far beyond their record. Take it from somebody that has watched every game. While the stock is going up, I'm still a firm believer that New Orleans has to make its next moves its best moves. While the Pelicans may be tempted to position themselves for the now, it's much more important that they have the future in mind. With that out of the way, let's get into the trade discussions. Now, I just want to say some of these rumors I really don't know about because they don't make the most sense, but some of them I definitely think are pretty valid. February 2nd, it would be reported by Jake L. Fisher that only Sacramento, New Orleans, and Washington had been linked to DeMontis Sabonis as suitors with significant interest. Now, my whole thing is, Sabonis is a very good basketball player, but should the New Orleans Pelicans really be looking at an upgrade at the big man position when they already have so many assets invested there? According to Jake, landing Sabonis would pretty much require a package like the Magic got for Vooch last summer. For those that forgot, the Bulls basically gave up Wendell Carter Jr., Otto Porter Jr., and two first round picks for Nikola Vucevic and Al Farouk Aminu. Wendell Carter Jr. has shown great improvement with the Orlando Magic, and one of those picks would go on to become Franz Wagner, and we're still waiting to see what the other pick becomes, but ultimately it would end up being a good trade for the Magic, and you could say the same for the Bulls considering where they are now. So yeah, the Bulls gave up a lot. Would you guys be willing to give up a package like that? For Sabonis, I feel like trying to gauge a trade for Sabonis is tricky because on one hand, he's underrated, but on the other hand, if you're a team that's looking to contend, a team that's looking to take that next step, you don't want to have to overpay. Let's move on to the next rumor. This one really gets me because it's like, oh snap, the Pelicans might actually do it. As a Pelicans fan, I'm a little nervous. I don't know what to expect. February 4th, Brian Windhorst noted that the Pelicans are trying to trade for a big name guard, including CJ McCollum, De'Aaron Fox, and Eric Gordon. Okay, Eric Gordon is not a big name guard in my opinion. I guess he has a bigger name, but calling Eric Gordon a big name guard is incredibly generous. You know what, I'm probably coming off as a hater. Maybe not, but I feel like I probably am. Pelicans fans will definitely understand where I'm coming from with this whole Eric Gordon stuff. While we're here, we might as well talk Eric Gordon. I'm going to make it short and sweet. If the Pelicans traded for Eric Gordon, I really wouldn't know how to feel. The Rockets fan in me sees that he makes a team like the Pelicans better, but the Pelicans fan in me still hasn't recovered from everything that he's put us through. Let's move on to the Pelicans' interest in De'Aaron Fox. This is major to me because you guys may or may not know, but I'm good friends with De'Aaron Fox. Beyond that, he was born in New Orleans. Seeing one of your favorite people playing for one of your favorite teams would be a ridiculous feeling. On top of that, De'Aaron Fox's value is not its highest. Last season, this guy was scoring around 25 points per game on great efficiency and it felt like nobody cared. This season, the numbers are lower. Halliburton has been ascending. Mitchell has put together some good games. It makes sense that the Kings would wanna trade De'Aaron Fox. But has Sacramento always made the move that made sense? No. While I would absolutely love for the Kings to figure things out with Fox and Sacramento, I would love it so much more if he was just a New Orleans Pelican, what do you want from me? I was kind of on the fence about this one, but I think I would also love if McCullum was a New Orleans Pelican, but only if the price was right. Now, we just saw what Norman Powell went for, and trust me, we're going to break down that trade soon. I would have loved Powell in New Orleans. As a matter of fact, he was close to signing with the Pelicans this past offseason. According to Eric Pincus, the New Orleans Pelicans view CJ McCullum as the ideal veteran scorer and leader 
to play alongside Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson. What do you guys think about the possibility of CJ McCollum joining the New Orleans Pelicans? At the time that I'm making this video, the Blazers and Pelicans are neck and neck for the final play in spot. For the near future, it looks like the Blazers are turning into sellers, meaning that that 10 spot might be up for grabs now when it comes to cj if a trade goes down i'll give you guys my full thoughts on the situation but i want to save some of that and i just want to let you guys know that in my opinion with cj it all comes down to price you could say that for most of these trades but i feel like that's especially true talking about somebody that's already 30 years old you don't want to have to overpay for a guy like him and that's not sliding him because i think he's amazing i think he's become underrated too i know that using that trade exception can be tempting but i think the pelicans have to realize that they're not as far away as everybody thinks that they are the young guys in and know have been showing crazy promise jackson hayes Herb Jones, even my guy Alvarado has been cooking. And I say that because he's undrafted. What he's doing right now is phenomenal. You know what? I want to take a quick moment to shout you guys out, the viewers, because you guys do show a lot of love. I tried to put you guys on to Herb early and I think it's paying dividends. I've actually had some people ask me for a Herb Jones breakdown. Now, if you guys want that, let me know in the comments below and I'll bring that to you ASAP. I could record that video in like a day. Now, according to Mike Scotto, the Pelicans appear to be buyers heading into the trade deadline. We've seen them interested in players like Harrison Barnes, Rocco, and Eric Gordon. Now, of course, Rocco was included in that trade to the Los Angeles Clippers, but Eric Gordon and Harrison Barnes are currently still on the table. And even if they don't get either of these players in the short term, long term, that might be something to look out for. I can't believe they're really linking us to Eric Gordon, man. Reportedly, rival execs believe Nikhil and Jackson Hayes are both available for the right upgrade as well, with the Pelicans being more willing to move Nikhil than in the past. I'll say this, if you're trading young high upside players, you better make sure that what you're getting back is well worth it. As of late, Hayes has been showing ridiculous potential. Moving to the four has completely changed his game. When it comes to this team, and I know it just, it's just going to sound crazy if you haven't been watching the games, I love the culture and I love what they're building. Talking about trades can be fun, but sometimes I feel that it gets lost in everything that these guys are human. Last season, Josh Hart hated playing basketball. This season, He's made it clear that, you know, he loves New Orleans, he loves Willie Green, and he's found happiness and joy again in playing basketball. Windhorse reports that Hart has been available in trade talks. And it just sucks so bad because if you remember when Hart was first traded to New Orleans, he let everybody know this is where I want to be. And I don't want to have a small market mentality, but that just means a lot. Hart has evolved into one of my favorite Pelicans. And if he's ever traded or not a Pelican, I'll always appreciate what he did for the franchise and for the culture. Now, when Hart signed his contract, I'm sure his agent, you know, made it clear that he was on a very tradable deal. I just hope that if Hart is also moved, that the team knows what it's doing. I don't know if anybody is as nervous as me going into this trade deadline and this off season, especially when I'm seeing reports like this from Brian Windhorse. The Pelicans are expected to be the most active team ahead of next week's trade deadline. Today it will be reported that the Blazers and Pelicans have talked about McCollum. The Pelicans have also talked to the Kings about Fox. They've also discussed Eric Gordon, and they've also spoke with the Hawks about Kevin Herter. In the comments below, let me know if you guys feel like any of these players would be a good fit in New Orleans. I think it's interesting that the Pelicans are looking at shot creators like McCullum and that they're looking at players like Herter. At least they understand that shooting matters. If the Pelicans are able to hit on their next move, if they're able to bring in guard help, a Zion Williamson return? looks that much scarier would you guys prefer to see cj in dallas or nno because according to windhorse dallas is interested also i really hope that's not a portland leak where they're trying to drive up the value of cj because we all understand that the blazers have every reason to trade cj it's not exactly like they hold the most leverage at the moment let me know what you guys think about everything clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel i'm get like coop bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload